Let the peoples recount the wisdom of the saints and let the church proclaim their praise. Their names will live on and on. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who for the glory of your name and the salvation of souls bestowed on the priest St. Lawrence of Brindisi a spirit of counsel and fortitude, grant, we pray, that in the same spirit we may know what must be done and through his intercession bring it to completion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. This word of the Lord came to me. Go cry out this message for Jerusalem to hear. I remember the devotion of your youth, how you loved me as a bride, following me in the desert, in a land unsown. Sacred to the Lord was Israel, the first fruits of his harvest. Should any presume to partake of them, evil would befall them, says the Lord. When I brought you into the garden land to eat its goodly fruits, you entered and defiled my land. You made my heritage loathsome. The priests asked not, where is the Lord? Those who dealt with the law knew me not. The shepherds rebelled against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went, and went after useless idols. Be amazed at this, O heavens, and shudder with sheer horror, says the Lord. Two evils have my people done. They have forsaken me, the source of living waters. They have dug them, themselves cisterns broken cisterns that hold no water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With you is the fountain of life, O Lord. With you is the fountain of life, O Lord. O Lord, your mercy reaches to, the he to heaven, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your justice is like the mountains of God, your judgments like the mighty deep. With you is the foundation of life, O Lord. How precious is your mercy, O God! The children of men take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They have their fill of the prime gifts of your house. From your delightful stream you give them to drink. With you is the fountain of life, O Lord. For with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. Keep up your mercy toward your friends, your just defense of the upright of heart. With you, O Lord, is the fountain of life, O Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have, have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Why do you speak to the crowd in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear, but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, 
You shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. This question posed to Jesus today is one that I'm sure many have asked, even in the, in the times since his ministry. Why in parables? In this part of Matthew's gospel, he had just told the parable of the sower sowing the seeds. Some seed fell on the path, the birds picked it up, some fell on rocky ground, and it began to spring up. But because of the little soil, the plants were scorched and withered. Then there was the seed that fell on the thorns that choked it up and the seed that fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. And what Jesus is doing here is he is trying to explain something that is beyond explanation. It's something that's beyond our ability to grasp. The notion of the kingdom of heaven breaking out into the world. And the reality is of a heaven that none of us have yet seen. If you've ever traveled anywhere and tried to explain to someone the things you saw or did, and you didn't have the benefit of having pictures to show them, you might know the difficulty of this. And the more different it is from what we're accustomed to, the harder it is for us to put words to it at least words that the other person will be able to understand. And that's if they're open to hearing it. The person who isn't open to hearing it, it really doesn't matter what words we use because they're just going to tune us out. And so what Jesus is doing is he's using these things that are familiar. Almost every culture has some concept of seeds and plants and raising some kind of animals. They have some concept of seeking out water and how important water is for life. They have some concept of the growing seasons and times of rich harvests and times of famine. And the prophets use these kinds of images too. It's not as though God only used them in the course of Jesus' ministry. Isaiah gives some of that imagery as well. He talks about Israel, the people of Israel coming into the promised land, and because of their sins, defiling that land. And the way that Jeremiah describes the people of Israel at the very end of the passage is one that is rather stark. The people have dug themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that hold no water. Because the people had gone astray, because they had followed these false gods, because they had hardened their hearts through their own selfishness and their depravity, they were no longer capable of bearing what is, so to speak, the water of life the fountain, the water that is given to us by God. That image that we hear comes from the Psalms. So it would have been an image that the Jewish people at the time would have, of Jeremiah's time, would have been familiar with. In other words, their hearts are hardened. Their ears are turned off, their eyes are blinded. And so that's what Jesus is working to undo through these various parables. And those who have ears to hear ought to hear. 
It's a message that's put out there in the way that the people can, can grasp. And yet for those who aren't ready yet, whose hearts are still hardened, whose ears are still closed, perhaps that message will make sense to them at some later point. Or perhaps someone else, another disciple, will repeat it. Which is the other reason Jesus spoke in parables. They were easily remembered, and easily shared. And for us, we have the benefit of so many things, so many resources. We can read the word printed on a page or from our smartphones. We can find commentaries. We can drink as deeply from that well as we wish. And even then, for some of us, at least from time to time, we too are those broken cisterns. We drink deeply, it goes in, and it doesn't stay. It doesn't have an effect on us. And so let us strive to be those people that drink deeply from that fountain of life and retain it. Hear those words, see the images, and allow them to change our hearts. I think this is also one of the reasons why God in his wisdom through the church has given us so many examples of saints. Their lives are like living parables, placed down into a different culture than the one where Jesus lived and taught, and yet they make those same truths visible again. They show what it's like to live that life of discipleship anew. Today, today, the church remembers St. Lawrence of Brindisi, a Capuchin Franciscan priest and a doctor of the church. And St. Lawrence was one of, the, one of those saints who had lived a holy and devout life from an early age, and besides that was quite brilliant. He was a man of of learning and a man of language. Not only did he speak his own dialects of Italian, but he also knew German and Bohemian and French, and he knew Latin and Greek and Hebrew. He was an exceptional learned man. And he could have hidden away and used these gifts to serve God in a very fruitful way. And yet, God called him to go out. St. Lawrence lived in, in the time following the various destruction of the Protestant Reformation, a time of great confusion, and a time of great political upheaval, particularly in Northern Italy and Germany, in the whole German-speaking lands. And St. Lawrence was called to renew and to restore the church by founding new friaries, new places where the Capuchin Franciscans could go and be planted and, and preach and give witness and bear fruit. And so, spurred on by his faith and his obedience, he did these things. But perhaps one of the greatest examples, one that sets St. Lawrence apart, even in his own time, was that he was also a military chaplain. At the same time in the early 1600s, the Ottoman Turks were pushing across what is today Hungary and the Balkans, gobbling up the lands as they went and attempting to press into Europe, into what is today Austria and Germany. And because of all of the political infighting amongst the Christians, it was difficult to get forces together to oppose them. And so St. Lawrence found himself as the military chaplain of, a, of an army, a defensive army pressing back the invaders, but that was outmanned and outgunned. 
the Turkish forces were something like four times their size. And there were a number of different avenues he could have taken. He could have fallen into despair. He could have, knowing that they were short and needed every man that could wield a weapon, he could have taken up arms alongside of them. But he didn't do either of those things. Instead, he used the gifts that God had given him. He used the talent of his preaching to stir up the soldiers to give them inspiration and hope. And then he picked up the cross and himself got on a horse and carried that cross to help to lead that military to victory. Doing exactly the thing, living exactly the kind of life that he was called to live. And inspiring those men who were working to defend their homelands, inspired them to fight that good fight, but to do it in a way that was in keeping with their Christian vocation. A difficult nut to crack in any, in any age. But as we look at the examples of all of the saints, let us find in them the inspiration that we need for whatever our troubles may be, whatever our difficulties and sorrows might be, so that our ears and our eyes can be tuned to hear that message from God, so that we too can find and grab hold of that nebulous concept of the kingdom of God that we are called to find, we are called to celebrate. We have been privileged to listen to the Lord's words and to hear of his faithfulness. Let us now bring our petitions to him. For the church, may the Lord continue to bless her with holy men and women in the priesthood and religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world through the mercy of God, may all come to know the gospel message and the ways of righteousness and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are facing adversity or burden of any kind, may the glory of Jesus calm their fears and bring them peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our midst who are suffering great loss, may God fill them with his consolation and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, especially Dori Yatskanek, may they soon receive a divine welcome into the heavenly promised land. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your love for us is infinite and unfailing. Grant our petitions, we humbly pray, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 